That's enough of resistivity, I'm sure you'll agree. So moving on to potential dividers. A potential divider is any two components in series. If the EMF of our cell is 6 volts, then Kirchhoff's second law tells us that from here to here, the potential difference must be 6 volts as well, because we have to have the total PD equal to the total EMF in our loop. So potential difference from here to here, 6 volts. In this situation, this resistor will have a potential difference of 2 volts across and this one 4 volts. This probably makes sense to you because if this is twice the resistance, it takes twice as much energy, twice as many joules per coulomb for the current to get through it. It's useful to have a formula for when the numbers are not quite so friendly and this is it. What this is saying is that the 100 ohms is a third of the total resistance. So 100 ohms out of 300 ohms, that's the fraction it is of the total resistance. And so it takes that fraction of the total available voltage as well. The reason potential dividers are so important is because whereas this circuit has an EMF of 6 volts, if I attach, I'll do a dotted line just to show I'm attaching something else. If I attach another circuit on here, I don't know, say a bulb or something. Well, the, as far as this little sort of sub circuits concerned, it's like it's only got an EMF of 2 volts. And if I was to attach another little sub circuit on here, maybe with a motor or something, as far as this little sub circuit here goes, it is like it only has a, an EMF of 4 volts. So this is why it's important because you can have these little sub circuits that are getting different amounts of voltage from your main circuit. Another important thing to say about potential dividers is that when we say potential difference, we do mean difference in potential. So let's say that this cell was a 6 volt cell. That means that if we say the potential here is 0 volts, then on the other side it's 6 volts. Now wires, we, have no, we say they have no resistance and so there's no potential difference across them. So that means everywhere along this wire here, it's the potential is 6 volts. But then let's say that this voltmeter was reading, as it did in the previous uh, diagram, let's say this voltmeter is reading 2 volts. Well, that means that 2 volts is being used up. So if we're at a potential of 6 volts here, then by the time we've gone through the resistor, we're down to only a potential of only 4 volts because we've used 2 up. And as we saw in the previous diagram, this voltmeter is reading 4 volts and that's exactly right. So we had a potential of 4 volts, 4 is being used up and that means that we're back down to 0 on the other side. So when we say that a voltmeter reads potential difference, we mean that the voltmeter reads the difference in potential between two places. And bearing that in mind, have a go at this lovely question. So I'm going to say that my 12 volts is going to be this uh, rail down here and up the top I'm going to say is my zero volts of potential. So first of all, these two resistors, uh, we've got three ohms all together. So this one's going to get a third of the voltage and that one's going to get two thirds. So if I had a voltmeter over here, it would read a third of the voltage. So that would be four volts and a voltmeter here would read eight volts. Now looking at these two, we've got four ohms this time. So this one's going to get a quarter and that's going to get three quarters. So again, if I had a voltmeter there, it's going to read a quarter of the 12, so 3 volts, and that one's going to read 3 quarters of the 12, so that's 9 volts. Okay, so if the potential here is 12, and then we use up 4, that means the potential at x is 
8 volts and then we use up the remaining remaining 8 to get back to 0 that's right and then over here we're starting at 12 and we use up 3 so at y, at y that means we're going to have uh, 9 volts and then we use up that 9 to get back to 0 on the other side so that's right so the question is what's the reading on the voltmeter going to be if we connect it between x and y well at x we've got 9 volts and at, sorry at y we've got 9 volts and at x we've got 8 volts so the difference between those two is 1 volt